Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. Today we're going to introduce the harmonic oscillator potential and start to progress along the uh, derivation of the harmonic oscillator uh, solutions. <coughs> okay, so let's um, start our discussion by thinking about a classical oscillator. The sort of prototypical classical oscillator is just a mass on a spring. We have some um, some uh, ideal spring um, that has a uh, particular spring constant. We have a mass at the end of that. The mass is sliding on a frictionless surface, so and we're neglecting air resistance or any sort of losses, so that it can vibrate. It can oscillate in along the, in this direction along the x axis. Uh, we define the positive x direction to be to the right, the negative x direction to be to the left, and we also um, define the zero uh, of x, x equals zero, to be the position where the spring is just relaxed. And um, for example, with the if the spring if the mass were not vibrating, we're not oscillating at all. Okay, so the spring is attached to a wall on one side and the mass is, is free to move on the other. Okay, so if we, 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 everybody should have seen this problem before. We have that the force on the mass due to the spring is equal to, is um, uh, minus the spring constant times x. This is just Hooke's law. So x, again, uh, as you make x more positive, that stretches the spring and the force is backwards. If x is negative, it compresses the string the spring and the and the and the force is to the right, okay, and this is equal to m a uh, by Newton's second law, and we express uh, a as d squared x dt squared. We're only talking about one dimension here, so we're dropping the uh, the vector notation. So we just uh, have f and x and, and no vectors. The spring constant is always defined to be greater than zero in this uh, uh, in these in this case. So um, so if we rearrange this equation, we just have d, d squared at the second derivative of x with respect to time is equal to minus k over mx. And so as we've discussed uh, with regard to the uh, finite potential well, this gives us whenever this uh, constant is, um, is uh, negative, then we get sinusoidal oscillatory solutions. And so the general, the general form of the solution in this case is a sine omega t plus b cosine omega t. So we get oscillatory solutions and from boundary conditions or initial conditions we can usually get rid of one of these. So for example if the spring is stretched and release at time equals zero and um, so we basically stretch it to the right and um, and we uh, we release it at, at t equals zero then um, at, at t equals zero sine omega t sine of zero is equal to zero and so all we have and cosine of zero is equal to one and so that we have that this constant b is equal to um, is equal to uh, the displacement at time equals zero so x sub zero is equal to b and we can set a equals zero um, and we'll just have a purely uh, cosine uh, function sinusoidal oscillation and so we're left with this simple solution. Okay, with omega here, the, the omegas which I wrote here, um, it's just, which is the angular frequency, is defined to be square root of k divided by m. Remember, k is the, again, uh, this k is the spring constant. I'm writing this k, excuse me, as a script k2 to, to remind us that that corresponds to the spring constant, not to the wave number. Okay, so if we think about the classical harmonic oscillator, we realize that um, as it oscillates to the to the left and to the right, it spends most of its time at its turning points because that's where its velocity is the, is, is the smallest. So as it's going through this equilibrium position, it's actually um, traveling the fastest, um, and then as it comes to as it turns around, its 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 velocity is momentarily zero and it's, it's slowing down and speeding up and so that spends most of its time at the at the end points, at the turning points. And so this is what we'd expect from a classical harmonic oscillator and we can see later on how this compares to a quantum oscillator.